Hey guys, I want to welcome you back to the channel. My name is Rory Reed from RoryReadArt.com and I just wanted to welcome you guys, as I said, back for part two of our How to Paint a Banana series, continuing off from where we left in part one. Just jumping into the piece now and adding in some lighter values just to increase the value range on the banana itself. So this is some of the lighter values, um, taking some of that lemon yellow color that we have, added some titanium white, and then just roughly dropping in this lighter value in the places where I see them prominent on the reference. So if you look at the reference photo in the top right, you know, all the same places that are the brightest is just what I am adding in roughly for this first pass onto the image of the banana itself. As I said before in the uh, previous part, we're using this reference photo simply for the lighting scheme. Just using this as a lighting roadmap. So our shadows, our highlights, our mid-tones, that's basically all we're, all we're using this for. Mixing up a slightly uh, darker value of that yellow now to go to make us another pass on the bottom of the banana here on the underside where the light isn't hitting too much. Just trying to refine it a bit. We had a darker value down before. So now we're just um, trying to get the value a bit closer to the reference. And once we get it, you know, in, in a close enough range, that'll be satisfactory. Because as I said, we're going to use, you know, we're going to, we're keeping this kind of loose. We're not uh, going for photorealism or anything like that. This is a fun piece just to get um, the, the muscles going, you know. It's always good to break things up from the norm and uh, just exercise your painting muscles. So mixing in some of this uh, green value now, close to the stem area, and dropping that in as well with a smaller round brush. Kind of frayed though, but you know, it's because it's been used over the years. I kind of like my little uh, frayed brushes, personally. Do have a couple um, new ones, of course, for finer de detailing, but uh, in general, I still use cheap old brushes that I bought years ago now. As long as they still have. Uh, some bristles on them were good to go, personally. Personally, I don't, you know, you can paint with anything, man. I've seen people on the uh, internet and in the art world that use all kinds of different um, instruments to paint with. Some of them use their fingers, some of them use their whole body, their feet, you know, mops, all kinds of things, toothbrushes. So that's why, you know, you don't really get caught up on um, having to have the most elite level professional grade brushes as uh, somewhat inconsequential in my opinion. And so I think value wise we are pretty close to where we need to be. If you look at the highlights in the reference, they're in the general vicinity of what we have on the canvas so far. I'm just trying to do a little bit of work on the torn stem area here now. Just different value browns. The primary brown color I have on the palette is the raw umber. The particular brand I'm using 
has a more cool raw umber than you would find in some other uh, brands, but it doesn't really matter. You know, if you have one that's not so cool, add some blues or some greens and just cool it up. That's the beauty of uh, the painting, man, and learning how to color mix. You can uh, create whatever you want after you've uh, become well practiced. So just cleaned up a bit of the working area there and uh, mixing up some new colors now. Just adding some transitional values onto the piece so that our contrasting values aren't so pronounced. Gives it a more blended uh, look. Needed the, this value to be a slightly darker as well, so and slightly warmer. So we added some of the warm yellow color we have on the far right, uh, far top right there. And yeah, shout outs to any of the uh, prominent yellow users out there. It's definitely tricky, man. Um, working with the the yellows and that's something I'm be beginning to uh, realize over the years as well is that each color um, has its own little quirks you know that you have to sort of get used to from the very beginning I used primarily blues some you know I'm a blue expert but um, all the other colors man have their quirks as far as how you can lighten them up how you can drop the value, how to saturate and desaturate them. They have different um, properties in terms of their opacity that you got to get around. And so looking forward for me personally, I'll probably spend some time uh, with each individual color, like um, doing some monochromatic paintings just to um, you know go down that rabbit hole just for the uh, the knowledge that I would gain from um, working with each color individually like I said for me I, I work a lot with cooler colors blues and greens purples I'm familiar with those yellow though I haven't as I said before not haven't worked the yellows that much so this was a nice experience nice learning experience for me and as you can see what I'm doing now is I'm just filling in some of the area around the highlighted region just to get things blended in and smoothed out a little bit better as I said before, these are like transitional values. Somewhere in between the brightest bright and the darkest darks. Going back to our yellow green mixture now. Dropping some of that in. And with each, each application, uh, each revision that I'm doing, I'm, you know, getting a bit closer and closer to the color and value in the reference photo as i said we're not going to go exact we're just going to go close enough to make the painting look great and so a lighter value was needed for 
of that particular region there. Taking out our liner brush now to try and get some of this underside a bit more refined. Not too much, of course. We're leaving things loose, but uh, cleaning it up a bit. Using some of that green hue as well. So this is going to be more of a, you know, pop art style painting, I would say. A little more contemporary feel, a little modern art kind of thing. As opposed to, you know, a more classic style. Still a decent way to go of course we are going to get this banana into a semi realism state and of course as I said we're going it's gonna be like a modern pop art kind of feel so I'm gonna add of course my usual abstractions put some fun colors in to make the uh, piece pop and jump and once we get it to that stage I think that would be a great place to leave it if you paint something like this as well or you know try to do uh, a copy of this one this would be a great uh, painting for like you know your kitchen area I personally did a series of uh, fruits that I have so these are good ones man post these up in your kitchen nice little vibe when you wake up in the morning to uh, get your breakfast going so spray the canvas with some water now and um, taking a clean brush and just doing a little bit of micro blending I would say. Paint is semi dried so not too much shifting is going on but uh, you know we still, we're still able to smooth things out a bit. Which is what we need, we don't want too much smoothing going on. And you can see in this short time, the banana itself has already taken a much better shape. It's looking more and more natural so far. Just using some of this highlighted green color now to um, define the plane by the stem a little bit more. I want to keep it uh, three-dimensional, you know, so um, the lighter value will accomplish that on the top there, as you saw. Back to our warm yellow color now, adding some white in and just dropping that in as well. And you can see all the different values and layers that we're putting in there sort of blending together and you know doing their own thing all working in concert uh, so that when you're when you look at it your eye sort of pieces things together paintings in this style are my personal uh, favorite especially when taken a little bit um, further or a little, a little bit more rendered past this point those kind of paintings are my absolute favorite because 
as I've said in previous uh, videos on the channel, I like when I look at a painting and I can see a different spectrum of styles, values, colors, you know, things of that nature. So seeing portions of the painting that are more rendered and more realistic, as well as portions of the paintings that are a little bit more loose. I love, personally love paintings in that ilk. So for me personally, my what I always do is have my main focal point. In this case, it would be the banana. Have that rendered out a bit more than the rest of the piece. As to you know, indicate its importance, or that's where I want the viewer to pay attention to mainly. And then everything else is just sort of a loosely done or not as rendered out and they play a more uh, supporting character or you know role mix in more mid values and mid tones again and just blending them into the highlighted color we've already dropped in previously Just micro adjustments, man, micro adjustments. A little bit of blending here and there. And you can see everything just comes together. Most of the translucence has already been eliminated at this stage now. None of the white canvas is popping through on the banana itself. So eventually with the yellows, you will eventually get there but uh does take a lot of layers from what i you know experienced when painting this piece so had to get rid of the opacity with um adding some raw umber to the darker values adding titanium white as well to the lighter values and that's how i was sort of able to get around it definitely would have taken a million layers to achieve this opacity if I just used the yellow that I was using the sort of lemon yellow neon yellow color if I just used that straight out of the tube probably would have taken a million different uh, layers before I couldn't see the white canvas below tone in the canvas and in the beginning as well could be another option to go with but as I said I mix it up man I don't really do the same exact thing every time I paint unless I'm doing a series where I want all the pieces to look similar so for this particular piece you saw at the beginning that I didn't use any uh, canvas toning just went right in and uh, started paint painting mixing a darker value now with our um, raw umber purple mixture for the shadow and just dropping that in again just using the reference photo to get a general idea of where I want to be Adding a bit of raw umber into this as well now. A little bit of the lavender color we have there. That's the dioxazine purple and white. And then just dropping that in here to just blend this shadow area into the background a bit more. Just another transitional value. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. 
using the background color now to um, fine tune the shape. clean round brush now to blend it in again and so with the past few minutes of work we've done you can see we've cleaned things up a ton from where we initiated or where we began in this part too so the banana is looking more banana-y, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's a real word, by the way. Look it up. Banana-y. I might be lying, but who knows? You won't know until you Google it. More mid-tones now. Blending, blending, blending. If you're going for um, a more realism style look as well, what I would recommend is like color matching all of these uh, various values and tones. That's usually the technique that a lot of realism painters use to achieve that. Me personally though, um, like I said, I like a little bit of uh, a little bit of the unknown to jump into my paintings you know so mixing on the fly and using my eye to judge is what I tend to do most of the time but again I don't go for absolute realism in my pieces usually just render things out to a decent level semi-realism I, I guess you could call it and then um, you know use my colors and abstractions that I add later to um, drop a bit of individuality into uh, each piece Blending this lighter value in now. Using the liner brush to just fine tune some of the more subtle highlights in the piece. It's working out well so far. I think ultimately the conclusion I came to is that the, the yellow is, it does operate similarly to um, some of the other colors, but the, as I said, the opacity or the uh, translucent characteristics of it uh, does make it a slightly trickier to work with. In other words, you got to know a couple of tips and tricks to um, get around the translucent nature of the uh, the painting so now we're just adding some nice little abstract brush strokes try to indicate uh, you know a, a little bit of our light bouncing around here
using just a small flat brush to uh, get this accomplished as well. Cleaning off our palette a bit, trying to make a little bit of space to work. So yeah, I'm, I'm liking where it is so far. I think total painting time on this um, piece was, I want to say, two and a half, three hours. You could accomplish this uh, this look in a um, shorter time period though, but as I said, I love, once I start painting, I, I get into the habit of uh, just layering and layering and layering because when you see a piece like this in person, you know, there's a special depth that you can, uh, your eyes can pick up that is not necessarily translated well on a camera lens, but in person, the multiple layers they really show through your eye can see every little detail gives a nice three-dimensional element um, when you see pieces that are painted in this way up close and so over the years I just you know fell in love fell in love with that especially when I used to um, show my work in uh, an art gallery used to get a lot of great compliments all the time that uh, you know patrons would appreciate it as well so you know with the with the boost of confidence confidence you got from um, the good reviews in person sort of just stuck to that style Added a little bit of uh, cobalt blue now, as you can see there on the right, and a little drop of the dioxazine purple. I'm gonna try to um, do some work on the background now. Add in some paint to the edges. Again, this is just a little five by five inch piece looks pretty good took some raw umber now some of our uh, hookers green some of our yellow mixture and we're just mixing some of that um, yellow green tone on the bottom edge of the banana here still a little bit too bright so we go back in for another micro dab of raw umber and uh, you know just to drop the value down just a small notch And so you see now that I'm towards the end of the piece, I'm using the liner brush more than at the beginning. 
And that's a good habit to um, pick up, I would say. When you start the piece, use a big brush and just block in your values. As you saw, I was using a, a sizable flat brush in the beginning. And that's going to save you a ton of time, especially since it's slightly more time consuming to paint with acrylics because of the quick drying time and the multiple, multiple layers that I use. So if I was using these small, tiny brushes from the very beginning of this piece, it would extend the, the overall painting time way past two and a half, three hours. It'll probably double, you know, double that time. But we are in a detail phase on this now, so a liner brush to add in some thin brush strokes here and there works well. Still working with our liner brush now just to, again, sharpen some lines on the edges of the piece. Dropping in just a thin layer of our darkest dark now. Trying to get it closer to the in the vicinity of where the uh, reference photo is. Taking a clean round brush now and just blending that down a bit so that it is not as dark. Just a more natural blend going. And as you can see, it's not exact to the reference photo, but we don't, we don't need it to be exact. We just need it to be in the ballpark. And that's where the darkest dark is, so we just drop it in and whatever we come up with or end up with from our natural painting skill is where we kind of leave it. We don't go back and painstakingly try to match it to the photo. That's not the purpose of why I am using the reference photo. The purpose is just to get where the lighting is. Where are the highlights based on where the, this, you know, how this banana was lit in the photo. You know, where did, where did they have the light source? And because they had the light source in that particular position, the highlights fell here, the midtones fell here, the shadows fell here, and we just copy that scheme, that lighting scheme. And of course, it doesn't have to be exactly as it is in the photo, just gotta be close. And even, even that's arguable. <laughs> might not need to, need to have it too close. Most important thing is to make sure you like it. You know, you're the artist, so get it to a place where you f see fit and uh, go from there. So now we're just cleaning up the palette again. I'm uh, Add in some titanium white to our cobalt blue color there, just to lighten that up. Mix in these um, lighter desaturated colors just to do some work on the background now. Gonna have a very colorful background. Will be desaturated though. You know, have a more. They're gonna have a more pale effect against this color that we already have in the background now. Using a large flat brush, gonna spray the canvas there so the paint flows a little bit better for blending and we're just gonna start 
dropping in some nice colors for the background I'm trying to keep them on the purple side of things because as you know uh, purple is a nice uh, compliment for the yellow of the banana so the background is going to primarily have this purple tone to it just so that, that it plays well with the focal point which is the banana itself a nice uh, turquoise green color now works well with the purple so we drop a couple of those in bounces off a little bit in the of the uh, green areas of the banana it's uh, the stem area as well so that's a nice um, nice little color play there darkened up the background color a bit now and we're adding those in. I'm gonna probably end up going back over those darkest background colors we just added though. You know, because we just want the tones to be dropped down just slightly. Took some of our warmer yellow that we mixed earlier as well and added in some more abstractions to the banana just to break the plane of the uh, edges up a bit then we're gonna use our light blue uh, cobalt mix and um, drop those in as well now we're gonna go over these dark areas here blending in with the original background color that we mixed and taking our purple mixture as well, going over. Spraying the canvas there, get the paint flowing a bit more for our um, Filbert bl brush blending. This is a clean Filbert brush we're using just to blend. And sort of creating a little bit of a vignette effect even though it's not going to be too pronounced but that's that's sort of what we're um, accomplishing Dropping in some more purples now. Clean filbert brush to blend it out. Add in some cobalt blue to darken down the light mixture that we have as well. To go over, we're sort of trying to um, match the value of the darker brown that we added before. So we're trying to, you know, put a dark blue or darker blue in that area just to try to match the value and blend it in Adding in some of the hooker's green mixture as well. The turquoise, you know, it's like a added some of the blue to it, so it's more of like a turquoise greenish color. Clean brush to blend it out as well. Grabbing a 
touch of the hooked screen now and darkening down that same color. Darkening down this purple a bit now as well. Dropping some of those in. Grabbing our cobalt light cobalt blue mixture. Dropping some of those in. Getting a nice colorful background going. Hit the canvas with a nice spray again of water. And now our clean filbert brush, we're gonna go in with it and get a nice smooth blend of all these mixture, color mixtures and patterns that we implemented. We're gonna blend all of that in. Have these colors dance next to the uh, yellow of the banana itself. Still prominent with the purples use the greens to bounce against the purples and of course the blues are a natural uh, transition as well so all these three uh, purple green and blue that work well together so now we're going to take a smaller flat brush and just add some solid brush strokes in to break up the monotony of the uh, of the smooth texture in the background Grabbing some of this yellow, lemon yellow color now with some titanium white. Defining these abstract highlights a bit more. Crossing the plane as well. Going over into the background. Back. Loving it. And we're just doing this mainly by feel, you know, it's uh, we place the brush stroke down, see if we like it. If not, we uh, blend it out, wipe it off or change it. Uh, using some of the original brownish background color now. And sort of uh, pulling some of the color back down to a more neutral state. And using the clean filbert brush to blend them out. When we added all the colors, it sort of uh, covered up the background but as I said this is a layered process so we just add some more of the original background color to um, make it shine through a little bit more in select in select areas you know And of course, you know, when you, if you attempt to do this painting, you can take the level of realism you want as far as you can go. Whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, if you're looking at the banana, it you know, I could have taken it, spent some more time and gotten it to be even more realistic. You know, and seen how that would have played against this type of background I could have taken the background into a more um, realism style background itself you know like a, sort of like a darker background to make it look more still life-ish if you understand what I mean there's a million different things you could do 
That's the whole point of being an artist. You do what you see fit. That's the fun part. You're the boss. This is what I chose to do because I wanted to sort of work with a bit more fun colors. And for me, I really loved how it turned out. So we're getting close towards the end now. This is basically where the painting was left. I'm adding in some of the background colors onto the banana itself to sort of immerse it in the atmosphere as I usually do. Just one or two brush strokes works well. Now we have some of the original brown background color now and I'm just dropping that in. And so this is our final piece. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really did. Um, this piece is going to be available on my store. You can check the link down below, uh, ruryreadart.com. Also, guys, check out my Teespring store. It's teespring.com slash stores slash ruryreadart. Got some nice logo tees over there and uh, some other goodies. You can check that out if you wish. Also, follow me on all social media, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the notification bell at Rory Reed Art. I'm on TikTok, Twitch, and Instagram at Tripler999. I do stream all my paintings on uh, Twitch full length, so make sure to follow me over there. Other than that, man, hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I certainly did, working with the yellows, and I hope you guys have a great day. Take it easy. Peace.